Hear your favorite NFL legends sharing their stories and insights every week right here on Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari. Take it away, guys. Locked, there's no way out. All right, now back in making his ninth appearance with us is not only one of our favorite guests, but also one of our favorite people, and that is uh, Sirius XM NFL Channel radio host and TNT Hall of Famer Zig Fricasse. You can hear Zig hosting multiple shows on Sirius XM's NFL Channel as uh, well as This Week in College Hockey. Zig is one of the great interviewers you're going to hear anywhere. And uh, we were honored to induct Zig as part of our 2015 Thursday Night Tailgate Hall of Fame class, and Bob and I are even more honored to call him a friend because a finer individual you will not find anywhere. And we're excited he is back with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Zig, Chris, and Bob, how are you, my friend? Hey. Always a pleasure, guys, to hear you. And, you know, great honor to be following LeVon Kirkland, who sounded all scholarly and everything, but I'm sure when he was laying the wood to Warren Moon and Jim Kelly and all the other <laughs> quarterbacks, he probably wasn't that nice to those guys. So <laughs> good to be with you. Ah, uh, thank you, Zig. So, Zig, I wanted to start off our time with you by getting your thoughts on uh, on Ezekiel Elliott and the situation with the Cowboys. His suspension is looking more and more like something that uh, they've got to hope, I, I would assume, pushes to next season because the longer this drags out, the more likely it could impact them either late in the season or, God forbid, into the postseason. So how do you think this thing, this whole thing is going to play out? Chris, I, I wish I had an answer for you on that because I, I don't think anybody – really knows. I know that this has been a cycle going on, that the NFL, you know, has requested that the uh, suspension be held, then the judge overturns that, and it becomes kind of a charade each and every week. Um, I was listening to some interviews recently, and, you know, the players were asked about it. In fact, we had uh, Travis Frederick, the all-pro center on Sirius XM NFL radio recently, and he was asked about it, and he goes, Quite frankly, we really don't think about it. Now, I don't know if that's him just putting on a facade or what, but I, I don't think he is. I think it's one of those things where they prepare, you know, whether Zeke is there or not. Now, ideally, he's one of the best players in the game, so the Cowboys' offense looks to flow differently with him. But um, I, I think this is just going to be one of those things like it was with the Brady situation. Keep on appealing it, get it overturned, appeal it again. So, uh, it could be a vicious cycle here. Uh, I'll tell you this, guys. You know, if anything, Darren McFadden may be fresh as a daisy if he ever gets activated because <laughs> he hasn't been activated all year long. And here's a guy, you know, people forget he was a 1,000-yard rusher. You know, he, he's good in a platoon. He wasn't bad with Alfred Morris. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that ultimately shakes out. And Zig, you know, one of the things that's causing me heartburn, you know, with my Steelers is, you know, <laughs> sort of the me, the me feeling that they that they are putting off, right? It's you know, Antonio Brown continues to show that he's sort of a me guy with his antics and the Gatorade jug, you know, Le'Veon Bell rapping about how he's going to need 17 million to stay, you know, and now with you know Martavis Bryant, and you know they're really not even paying any attention to him in the offense. He's demanding a trade, now been demoted to the scout team. What do you think is going on with my Steelers? Well, I, I wish I knew. I mean, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, there may have been things going on in the Chuck Knoll or Bill Cowher era that uh, we didn't all know about, but, you know, that was kind of kept in quiet, whereas now everything's so magnified on social media. You know, I think Mike Tomlin has put on the strong facade, obviously, that, you know, this isn't an issue, but if it isn't an issue, then why isn't Martavis Bryant playing? You know, is Tomlin trying to send a message? Hey, Martavis, cut the BS with, you know, the social media. You know, do we ultimately see a ban on them on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Maybe maybe that's what needs to happen. Maybe they need to shut down the Internet for these guys to not express their feelings so so widely. You know, the thing is, the Steelers have achieved what they have, but – they haven't really clicked, I would say, all year long. I mean, the one game against Kansas City, they benefit from that tip pass down the sideline where Brown is paying attention and runs it in for the touchdown. But, uh, you know, last week I thought Cincinnati you know, put them in a, in a difficult spot, but then, you know, the, the Steelers' defense actually saved them uh, last week, limiting them to just 19 yards. So 
just seems as though, Chris, there's a lot of noise coming out of Pittsburgh. Maybe these aren't your Steelers or your father's Steelers for that point. So it'll be interesting ultimately to see how this you know, affects them as the season goes on. But uh, a lot of noise coming out of Pittsburgh that we normally don't hear. Right. Yeah, and I don't like hearing it. <laughs> I think on the upside, there are right. a couple of teams that have uh, surprised people so far this season. You look at the Eagles at 6-1, and one, the Rams at 5-2 and two in the amount of points that they're scoring, right? Kansas City got off to a hot start. Who, who are some of the surprise teams that you think we might actually be seeing playing either late into January, maybe even February? Boy, that's a good question. Um, Philadelphia, Chris, is a reasonable possibility, although I'm not sure how long they sustain without their, their Pro Bowl tackle, Jason Peters, who's uh, going to miss the rest of the season, unfortunately. So it'll be interesting to see if they make a swap, maybe a Joe Staley type, uh, by the trade deadline. But, uh, you know, Carson Wentz has shown to be, you know, quite a young quarterback already. Uh, he's a student of the game. He gets it. He's a man of faith, which uh, I know is a big deal to a lot of people, and it seems to show because the young man's already ingratiated himself into the Philadelphia area. Um, who else would I consider a surprise? Well, maybe not because I thought they had the talent anyway, but I think the Rams – are progressing along real nicely. Um, it, it was obvious to me that uh, Jeff Fisher's ways have gotten a little staid and a little bit old. Now, granted, they went out and made a, a lot of changes in the offseason, brought in a couple of receivers from Buffalo and Watkins and uh, Woods. You know, Andrew Whitworth's been a big boost to that offensive line. Jared Goff starting to look like the franchise quarterback that everybody thought that he would be. So, if they get any semblance of defense, I think you may see the Rams make a uh, surprising run here. Then you look at the AFC. Who would I consider a surprise there? Um, maybe because they've struggled a little bit. Oakland, although they got off the floor a little bit on that Thursday night game against Kansas City. Um, maybe they make a, a second-half run. Um, who else? Probably, probably to a degree, Deshaun Watson and the Texans. I, I didn't expect him to really become the impact player he immediately did. Um, I figured in time to get used to the pro game, he would ultimately be a very effective player like he was at Clemson, but he has assimilated himself very quickly to the Houston Texans and the, the fact that he's developed as quick as he has, and once again having to play without J.J. Watt and some key defenders, Whitney Merciless in them, uh, the fact that the Texans are still above board, that seems rather surprising itself. So those are a, a few teams. I think, again, the Texans, if things come to pass for them, they may be making a little bit of a run here. But, again, to get through New England, that's going to be awfully, awfully tough. Bob, questions for Zig? Always a pleasure to speak with you, Zig. I hope you've been well. And, and we, um, I guess the main story around NFL these days is the Green Bay Packers and the loss of Rodgers. And, uh, Zig, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I've ever seen a player more valuable to one franchise than Aaron Rodgers. It's, it's like a total different commodity without him. And when he went down a couple of weeks ago, you could just hear the collective groan throughout the whole league because it changes the entire uh, scope of the NFC. But uh, this is a franchise, Zig. It's like every year the guy is banged up. They don't have the best defense. They outscore people, but uh, they rely too much on him. Uh, is, are we going to see this until he retires? Bob, first of all, it's always a pleasure talking to you, my friend, because I always love uh, the interaction with you and Chris and always keep up on uh, social media and that. Uh, that's a great point by you. Um, in, in fact, I remember a few weeks ago uh, tweeting out during the Cincinnati game when they were getting walloped during the first half, I'm like, what the hell is going on here with the Packers? But then ultimately, when you let a team hang around long enough in a game, then at some point Aaron Rodgers is going to come back to beat you. And I think it's one of those things where – his confidence, Bob, just keeps this team, and I agree with you, 
I, I think they are a average to below average team that's probably elevated to what's called elite status simply because of their quarterback. I think their defense is average to below average, even though you've got a guy like Clay Matthews on there who I would take on my team. And I like uh, Haha Clinton Dix uh, as a safety. But there are other players I think are a dime a dozen. So I'm not sure Ted Thompson's done a good enough job surrounding this team. In fact, I mean, you know, now they've got this sleeper in Jones, who I like quite a bit, so maybe he helps the ground game. But uh, the game against Dallas, you know, that became a game because Aaron Rodgers knows how to dissect the team, and they basically they stole that one from Dallas. So uh, until they're able to, first of all, stay healthy, because they've had a battered offensive line, uh, and then obviously to upgrade the, the talent on defense, too. I, I think now we'll see maybe Green Bay come back to the pack, although they talk up uh, Brett Huntley quite a bit. But I think uh, McCarthy aired maybe a little too much on the side of caution last week. At some point, guys, Huntley's going to have to be a guy that they're going to have to have some confidence with for Green Bay to have any type of success. But well, let's not kid ourselves. You know, they'll give an MVP to a Tom Brady or, you know, whoever's worthy but if you really look at it, maybe if they gave, how would you say, the most important player in the mm-hmm. NFL, it would be number 12 on the Green Bay Packers, and everyone else would be battling for second. Up here in New England, Sig, it's always Patriots, as you know. And if you watch this team weekly like we do up here, you, you look at their defense, and uh, they cannot rush the passer. It's probably one of the worst Pass rushing offenses I've ever seen, and, and usually they find a ways to improve this as the year goes on. But they've been awful up to now, Zig, and now they lost Hightower for the year. We know they're going to score points. Gronkowski's always banged up. Here's another team like New England; they just kind of go through the same stuff every year. But they usually have a happier ending. Do you see the same kind of season, Zig, with them? Uh, Belichick able to patch up this defense enough to get to the Super Bowl? Bob, I, I would agree with you to a point because I think it was after the Car- the Carolina game that they lost in overtime that something dramatic needed to happen. And sure enough, and Tony Romo, who I think is maybe the best analyst in the game right now because I love listening to him call these plays before that happened, was saying that before the Tampa game, they were going to go to more of a zone defense. And that's what Matt Patricia's done. And believe it or not, the defense has actually been better than they were. And also, let's not forget, Hightower missed a couple of games. Then when he came back, they started to turn things around. Now he's out for the rest of the year. So, you know, the old Parcells line, the guru better start guruing. Well, Belichick, I'm sure, is going to have to start dialing up, you know, some different type of defensive schemes and things to hide, you know, their deficiencies. May they be a player when it comes to trade deadline? I wouldn't be surprised if they go out and maybe, you know, try to get somebody. Uh, I read on the Internet that maybe uh, Akeem Ayers uh, was a possibility there. So um, that's one of those things, again, where I think New England probably stands a little bit of a better chance. Remember everyone thought that they were going to fall off the face of the earth because Julian Edelman's out? Well, Tom Brady still looks like Tom Brady to me, so they'll find a way to adapt. But we were talking earlier, guys, about Rodgers being indispensable to the Packers. I'm not going to put this guy on Rodgers' level, but think about the fact New England's defense hasn't been the same since Ninkovich retired. Maybe not the greatest pass rusher, but maybe one of the smartest guys they've ever had, knows the scheme, knows the defense, was their semblance of a pass rush, They haven't replaced him yet. Remember, they drafted the kid Rivers out of Youngstown State. He got hurt. He hasn't helped. So they've had some injuries and retirement betray them on that side of the ball, too. But they're still the Patriots, and they still look above board than anybody else. Just a couple more before we let you go. I want to get a couple of thoughts uh, from the NHL. First of all, (laughs) can the Las Vegas Golden Knights keep this up all season? Oh my gosh! Put them into the. St- hey, can you imagine if they 
They won. Hey, we could all parade down the strip with the Stanley Cup. How cool would that be? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, it, 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 this, guys, this has been an absolute surprise. And, and you know, obviously we're still thinking about uh, them, uh, the city, uh, you know, with the, that horrific tragedy that occurred there earlier this month. It's just mind-numbing, but uh, and their prayers and thoughts still going out to those people that were affected by this. But And maybe that's one of those things that's really kind of galvanized the town. I mean, I, I lived out there 16 years, and I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but I honestly thought one day the NHL would fly there in Vegas. So did Oscar Goodman, who, of course, was the prominent attorney who became mayor for many, many years. He made that initial pitch, guys, to Bettman, and people thought he was nuts. Fast forward less than two decades, now you got a team there. And let's face it, they – you want to draw a football analogy. Do you remember when the Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars came into the NFL, how set up they were on free agency and uh, players in the expansion draft? This almost looks like right. the same thing for the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, James Neal has been in the Stanley Cup final, a 40-goal scorer. You've got uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, unfortunately, he's concussed, but a multiple Stanley Cup winner. Um, you know, you've got a guy like uh, Nate Schmidt, who is an acclaimed uh, power play specialist with the Washington Capitals. So they, br- they brought those guys in. They drafted them through the expansion draft. George McPhee built up the Caps to a contending level. Gerard Gallant, very good coach with players, relates well because he was a player himself. All of it, guys, and then the draft that they had, it's worked out extremely well. I'm not sure Vegas may make the playoffs this year and hold up with this gaudy record, but I'll say this. Their future is extremely bright. They've got some youngsters in Chicago that aren't far from making the NHL. They were built right, and believe it or not, in Sin City, I think people are actually grasping the fact they have a pro team and the transplants, the Chicagoans, the Bostons, the people from Buffalo who live out there, I think will ultimately adapt Vegas as kind of like a second team. And I'm told the T-Mobile arena is absolutely off the charts. I think Vegas and, and uh, hockey out there is a very bright future. It's definitely off to this unexpectedly great start. And Zig, I know it's real early in the college hockey season, but who are some of the teams you're looking forward to watching this season? Well, I think you got to look at national champion Denver. I know they've had uh, some losses, but uh, watched uh, one of their games against Notre Dame recently, then they still look uh, very strong uh, defensively, offensively. They've got uh, the kid uh, Terry, who was the shootout hero for Team USA in the um, under-17, the gold medal against Canada this past year. Uh, a youngster named Borkstrom, who you look at him when he skates, He's got kind of a lean, lanky build, like a young Yaramir Yager. So I think Denver will be strong. Uh, Notre Dame looked to be strong, although they're uh, actually losing right now against uh, Nebraska Omaha, who uh, has been a sleeper hockey program for a lot of years. And then you look at the other suspects, BU, BC, they're always going to be strong. Uh, Ryan Donato, the Bruins draft pick, uh, his coach, his dad, Teddy Donato, the former Bruins and Rangers player, he coaches at Harvard. They look to be strong again. So it's early yet. You're right. Uh, uh, but I'm telling you right now, Chris, uh, those are the teams at, at this juncture that look pretty darn strong. Minnesota, too, they're always strong out of the Big Ten. Zig, before we let you go, we'll remind our listeners about you know how they can hear you, all the different places you are over on uh, Sirius XM. Boy, I wish if I had every if I had money for every channel I was on, I'd be a millionaire. I could tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> do the uh, <laughs> got the uh, sports updates that run uh, three days a week. Um, the NFL radio, uh, one thirty to six thirty Eastern, Wednesday through Friday on Channel eighty eight. The top of the hours on the different um, sports channels, Mad Dog Sports Radio 82, NBA Radio, so the NFL Radio can hear the sports updates there. And then Saturday nights, I'm with uh, former NFL tackle Jeff Schwartz, 7 to 11 Eastern on late hits. 
And then after Sunday night football during the season, I'm with former Oilers and Titans standout Brad Hopkins on NFL Rewind. And then uh, you mentioned college hockey. Pleased to say that uh, November 6th will be the season premiere of this week in college hockey. Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern on our ESPNU college channel, Sirius XM 84. And how can our listeners follow you on social media as well, Zig? Chris and Bob, I'm at uh, Zig, Z-I-G, Fracassi, F as in Frank, R-A-C-A-S-S-I, on uh, Twitter, and uh, Zig Fracassi at Facebook. Zig, it's always a, a privilege for Bob and I to get to spend some time with you and have you back on the show. Can't thank you enough for your time tonight, and uh, hopefully we get to do it again real soon. Chris and Bob, always a pleasure, always a, an honor to be with you guys, and Again, uh, proud to be part of your Hall of Fame. And just a note here before on this Miami-Baltimore game, uh, Joe Flacco on a scramble starts to go down, and then Kiko Alonso appeared to get the elbow in a position where he couldn't get it out of the way, knocks uh, Flacco's helmet off, and uh, Joe unfortunately appears to be concussed. So uh, that caused a bit of a scrum, but the Ravens win in this game. But Flacco is out for the Ravens. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, Joe is not a guy that, I, you know, I've had a lot of, uh, you know, I was a, as a Steeler fan, right? He's a Raven, so, but uh, you certainly never want There's to see someone go out there, and take though, a respect there, though, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, there is. yeah. I mean, yeah, we absolutely. respect one another. We hate one another, but we respect <laughs> them, you know, for the stars that they've had. And you never, right. either which way, you never want to see a guy go out and get concussed like that. So uh, hopefully he's all right. Absolutely. Big thanks so much for your time, my friend. We'll catch up with you again real soon. Keep in touch. Chris and Bob, thank you guys, and uh, happy holidays if I don't talk to you before then. All right, we will. All right, thanks, Zig. Same to you yep. and your family. You, thank you. That is Zig Fricasse, and again, you can find him all over the dial over there on Sirius XM and uh, this week in college hockey as well, on, on top of all the football stuff he does. And uh, like I said at the, in his intro, a finer individual, right, Bob? You're not going to find anyone better than Zig Fricasse. Never. No, he's loved that man. And, uh, again, he's been accommodating beyond belief and uh, always uh, so upbeat and uh, gives so much insight into the various sports. And, and we're honored that he's a part of this show and our Hall of Fame. Yes, we are. All right, when Bob and I come back, we'll be turning on our Thursday Night Tailgate Spotlight on the positive, hear which players are doing great things in their communities, and then we'll wrap up the show. We'll do that on the other side of these words from our friends over at the Salt Creek Golf Retreat. If you're looking for a great place for your annual golf outing, a weekend golf getaway, or just a round of golf with your buddy, then Salt Creek Golf Retreat is just what you're looking for. Centrally located in Nashville, Indiana, just south of Indianapolis and west of Cincinnati. This challenging but fair 18-hole golf course appeals to all skill levels, and its scenic views of rolling hills and tree-lined fairways are sure to make golfing memories for years to come. Owned and operated by former Purdue and New York Giants fullback Randy Manier, Salt Creek Golf Retreat offers stay-and-play packages that include golf, and a fully furnished one- or two-bedroom condo. After your round, be sure to stop by the 19th Hole Sports Bar and Restaurant for great food, fun, and drinks. Randy and his staff will treat you like family. For more information, log on to saltcreekgolf.com. That's saltcreekgolf.com. Or give them a call at 812-558-5944. Salt Creek Golf Retreat. Start making your golfing memories today. 